there are individuals or, or a group who would like to be of assistance in, in providing it, but, but they don't have any particular expertise on their own, they just want to volunteer bodies, mm -hmm. who would they contact? Um, I would say right now, probably the best place would be United Way for the food delivery, as well as with the food bank. They're coordinating all of that. Mm -hmm. And I would add, that situation may change by tomorrow afternoon, so there may be more organizations doing the same thing that right. you're, you're asking. And I, and I would be remiss if we didn't stand up here. And we have leaders of the three leading hospital institutions in the city who are on the front lines every day. Thank you for doing all this work and really, I think, adapting on an hourly basis how you need to change. There are thousands of healthcare workers out there in this community who are really on the front lines with our public safety personnel. And I, I want to thank them because they are really doing an excellent job, not just in the hospitals, but all across the community. And thank you, President Marco Somerville, the Sheriff from Akron City Council, and Rich Swirsky, and, and Jeff Wilhite, President of Summit County Council. Thank you for the support in all, all of what you're doing for this community. So, I'll let you And just to speak to your point too, um, check back you know, on our website, Summit County Public Health, because as we become aware of these things, uh, you know, that's a really good place to get resources for, for Summit County. I mean, the CDC and ODH also have very good information on COVID-19, but any of that community engagement, community ignite, you know, those situations, um, those will be, you know, as soon as we become aware of them, we'll put them on our website so that people can volunteer. Because I know the food bank does have to make you know, food boxes, so they, they will need additional volunteers to help with that. Betty, did you have? I did. Um, can someone talk about um, testing and availability of testing? I understand when the county health doesn't have it. Can we talk, we've got leaders at the hospital here, and I know I've asked this already, but can we just have it in one spot? Can you talk about the availability of testing, and people are wondering about drive-up testing? Oh, sure. Um, just, yeah, just here. Uh, my name is Brian Hart, H-A-R-T-E, that's Brian with an I, I'm the president of Cleveland Clinic Akron General. As Dr. Mahalovich has uh, stated, I think over the past day or so, the Cleveland Clinic uh, labs have um, developed the capability on site at the Cleveland Clinic to do COVID-19 testing. Um, what was your other question, Betty? Um, uh, drive-up testing? And like, well, right, I'm, yeah. Like, you so, me, so that, that test is currently only available at the Cleveland Clinic main campus. They, they do have the test available. They are running tests. We're still ramping up the capability from, a, from the standpoint of how many tests that they're able to do. Um, but we do have the capability now. There, um, there are also, um, the, the, uh, the hospital systems also have the ability to send out to other uh, locations uh, to get the testing done as well. So I, I can't speak for my comrades, but, um, but I believe that is the current reality. Um, for, for all of us. In terms of drive-up drive up testing, again, uh, I do not believe that anyone has that capability right now. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic is working with, uh, working to, to develop drive-up testing capabilities, which uh, we uh, will have more information, I think, over a very short number of days. Good afternoon, I'm uh, Tom File, uh, Chair of the Infectious Disease uh, Division at uh, Summa Health, uh, last name is F-I-L-E. Uh, I'm also uh, President of the Infectious Disease Society of America, so I've been both involved in the issue of testing and protocols and policies, both from our uh, institution uh, locally here at Summa, uh, as well as nationally with our uh, professional uh, society. But Betty, specifically to answer your question, uh, we are now uh, in the process of starting to develop testing within the institution, but that takes some time because you have to get the appropriate devices, the equipment, the platforms, and then you have to do validation. And we're in the process of starting to do that, but by the time we'll probably be ramped up in order to do testing, probably at least two weeks. Now, we do plan, once we do have uh, testing available, to uh, do drive-through uh, testing. But again, that's probably not gonna be till uh, at least the uh, end of this month. So Dr. Pyle, that means that any tests that are being tested right now are being sent to the state? Well, we have uh, a couple options. I mean, yeah, ODH, uh, and then we would go through the local health department uh, through Donna and her colleagues that are, that, who have been very helpful. Um, then there's some commercial labs uh, that are available, and we've actually sent some to the commercial commercial labs this week. 
My name is Rob McGregor, M-C-G-R-E-G-O-R, and I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Akron Children's. Akron Children's, likewise, has developed uh, the, the beginning of the capacity to, to test locally. We are in the process of getting that launched and begin the validation, which, as Dr. Powell just said, will take probably about two weeks before we can do anything with that. And I do believe that there may be some other discussions at the, the regional uh, hospital association of some collaborations that our, our bosses may have just decided we were doing something together, but I don't know that for a fact. that again, Betty. So um, the first thing is please don't go to the emergency room just to get tested. Please leave the emergency room for emergencies. And I think I speak on behalf of all of us when I say that please uh, help us take the best possible care of patients uh, with emergencies um, by respecting that. Um, if you're symptomatic, the best way to do it, at least within the Cleveland Clinic Health System, is to do it virtually. That um, is probably the fastest and most effective way to get access to a, to a provider who can help Evaluate your symptoms and then decide what further testing is appropriate and, and help help arrange for that through uh, through the testing capabilities. Well, uh, yeah, no, I no, I totally agree with uh, Brian. I know there's going to be a lot of worried well out there, but quite honestly, uh, I just want to um, reinforce the fact that the great majority of the people who are actually are infected, if they are, it's a self-limited uh, illness, but. The greatest concern that has already been mentioned by Donna and the mayor that is the older patients and the patients uh, who have underlying conditions. So unless you're in that category, I think it's important to understand that minimal uh, symptoms are usually associated with younger, healthy people. So they shouldn't really be so concerned about uh, getting tested. But right now with our policies and with the capacity we have available, we're only going to be testing people that have symptoms. So not people who uh, do not have symptoms. So we would uh, certainly, and I agree with Brian, we, we don't want uh, those people to be coming to the emergency room just because they want to be tested, because that would be inappropriate use of the facilities, and it's going to overwhelm the system. So our job in Family Services is providing guidance to local child care facilities. Um, they uh, work through us, have contracts with us, get paid through us in different ways. And so we are just coming off of the governor's speech, so we are working through that. The directives have just been sent to our Summit County JFS, and they will be working with the local child care providers. Um, I think what this is going to take is for employers to look at how they are treating their their staff and their employees who have children. Uh, at Summit County, we are relaxing our standards on how we allow folks to take sick leave. Uh, the requirements put up upon them typically are going to be relaxed so that they can utilize their sick leave as well as vacation time. Um, we would ask that other employers do the same thing and to be flexible uh, for these folks who have school-aged children. Um, you know, I think that that, going back to your question, what can well-intended people do. Um, be kind to each other. Wash your hands. Uh, follow the direction of the public health officials and the doctors who say practice good social distancing. So um, that is what we're trying to do. I understand your question that putting kids together in an area uh, isn't ideal or optimal, but I think uh, from what we've all been told, 
while children are carriers, they, they carry lower risk of mortality. And so we want to make sure that we're stopping the spread, but we also want to make sure people are able to support their families and, and their children are also cared for. Okay. We're going to go ahead and um, wrap up this press briefing at this point. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to all of our panelists for, for uh, attending today. Thank you.